Hi fellow Chef Knife enthusiasts, Andrew Hunter here, back again with another knife from my collection, the Masamoto KS. Let's start with telling you something about the uh, Masamoto Sohonten. Masamoto Sohonten is a legendary brand with over 150 years of history. The name is perhaps one of the most well-known and well-respected knife brands in Japan, with a well-deserved status as number one sushi knife makers. Born in 1845, the first generation Masamoto, Minosuke Matsuzawa, went to Osaka as an apprentice at a young age of 17. Four years later, he returned to his hometown in Kanto and began making Honyaki chef knives. After five generations tirelessly pursuing the art of knife craftsmanship, Masamoto has earned its status as the premier brand for professional Japanese kitchen knives. The Masamoto flagship store, Sohonten, that opened in Tokyo in the year 1890, is still welcoming visitors at the same spot after 130 years. Alright, now that's out of the way, let's talk about my Masamoto KS Kyuto. I'm a bit nervous right now because it's no easy task unboxing, reviewing a knife with arguably the deepest cult following of any knife worldwide. For many knife nerds, little introduction is needed for this highly sought after Gyuto from Masamoto. There are few knives that attract the kind of attention, discussion and desire to own as the Masamoto KS series. These knives have achieved a semi-legendary status among kitchen knife users, collectors and connoisseurs. Somewhat of a legend in the knife community, it has a reputation for being one of the best performing chef knives around. Hence, it was the most sought after and talked about knife in the Japanese knife world from around the late 90s for two decades straight. Everyone wanted one of these, everyone loved them. At a certain point, to my knowledge somewhere around the year 2016-2017, Masamoto stopped in the production of this knife altogether. I don't know why exactly and I doubt anybody in the knife community knows for sure the fact is that they haven't been in stock anywhere in the world for a few years after they stopped production. At a certain point, a few years after being out of production, Masamoto KS knives were selling on eBay for around $600 up to $1200. I would never spend $1200 on this knife, but it speaks volumes about how sought after they were. It's the profile that moved a thousand ships and inspired numerous copycats. The Masamoto KS is basically following the French Sabatier profile. They are made of Shirogami number no. two steel, white number no. two, and gone through the highest level of hand polishing and sharpening. I would assume it's actually less the profile and more the construction that made it so special in its heydays. Going from a full tank thick Sabatier with a significant taper to the super light lasery ground blade with a continuous distal taper on the spine towards the really thin tip of the Masamoto KS. That was probably a big leap at the time. It was the knife that defined distal taper at the time. With its very thin tip, some meat at the heel for the tougher stuff, I can imagine it was most easily the top tier knife in its heyday. Many professional chefs and people in the Japanese knife community will say that over 20 years or so, the Masamoto KS was an excellent performer, great grind, great heat treat, very pretty to some eyes. And over the years, it created a legacy with other smiths trying to mirror or improve on it. Nowadays, many people might say the Japanese knife world has just come so far since then. With so many new offerings, the KS might has just been passed by. After it disappeared for a few years, and then this reiteration of it emerged, some say it was not the same knife either. Uh, that the newer version is a step down in fit, in fit and finish and performance from the older version and not worth the cost today. I picked up my KS up in 2020. I picked it up just after they re-emerged fully aware that most of its hype comes from around 10 years ago when it was one of the better knives out there. But buying a KS now 
perhaps serves no purpose other than to be able to say to other Japanese knife enthusiasts, I have a Masamoto KS. I have a Masamoto KS. I have a Masamoto KS. But I mean, it's the original, the king of these Kito style profile. So I bought one, I wanted it, end of story. All of that being said, what do I think about this new reiteration of the Masamoto KS? As I already mentioned, the knife has been unavailable for some time and this one comes from a new batch recently created. They have different grinds and metallurgy from the predecessors. These are actually stamped mono steel knives constructed out of one piece of Shirogami white number two high carbon reactive steel. So it's a mono construction, no layers, no cladding. It also came with its own Saya too. That is actually really cool because it definitely doesn't fit in a general or like in a universal Saya with its unique quite oversized blade profile. So great added value right there. The profile might be borrowed from Sabaches, but the actual entire blade shape is pretty original. There is a reason why the Edge profile is what a lot of other knives try to emulate. There are quite a few knives that go after this profile, but this is the classic. This recreation of a Masamoto KS still has an excellent set of characteristics, and this knife does a lot of things pretty well. It has a awesome flat chopping area at the back and a slight curve to the front. Just a really nice edge profile. Great for lots of techniques. This knife is a versatile tool in the hands of a skillful cook. Uh, this can be a perfect prep knife. It just comes with a complete package. One of the greatest things about this knife is how the spine gradually tapers down to the tip. And just look how thin the tip gets. This is a classic example of a continuous distal taper, which means the thickness of the spine changes over the course of the knife. Uh, the fit and finish of the rounded spine and choil is just beautiful. And I like the look of this very deeply embossed kanji that will stay there forever and not going to wear off easily. The blade at the heel is not particularly tall, uh, 48 millimeters, 49 millimeters, but it gives enough knuckle clearance. Um, it's flat from the heel and has quite a long flat spot and then has got a little bit of curve to it. It just flows into the heel really nicely. It's not so much a rocker because of this profile, uh, the tip is not way up there but more like in the middle of the blade, but you'd still be able to rock with it. It is fairly thin at the neck, which uh, works excellent for a pinch grip. It is also ground thin behind the edge. The blade is pretty stiff at the back half and a little bit flexible at the front. Personally, I would almost call it a tall sujihigi. Um, overall, I'd say it could be a good knife for anyone if you like to profile. If you have a variety of techniques in your arsenal and want a longer blade with a generous flat spot, this is a great profile. The D-shaped magnolia wood handle is simple, nothing fancy, but boy, does it work well together with the blade. I just love the blonde look of the wood together with the blonde buffalo horn ferrule and the cute little red kanji on the bottom. Uh, the handle just pairs perfectly with the blade in my opinion. Uh, it has a pretty good clue up job where it comes in with the tang. I'm right handed, uh, but I know a few guys who are lefties and don't mind the grip on these type of D handles at all. Just so you know if you are a lefty. This Masamoto KS is so so light and nimble with its beautiful thin behind the edge grind. It can slice through a reasonably sized watermelon in a single stroke without wedging. Weighing only 176 grams, this is by far one of the, if not the, lightest Kyoto of this size that you could buy out there. I was worried that the lightness would make it feel too delicate in my hands, 
but this is not the case luckily it feels extremely solid on everything uh, the minimal weight and thin profile of the knife considering its size making cutting with it feel absolutely effortless especially when the edge is well maintained speaking of maintaining the edge um, it's extremely easy to get it sharp just a few seconds of stropping on my Shepton glass 8000 or Snow White and it gets real stupid sharp edge retention isn't terrible but not that great either in my humble opinion this new iteration of the KS is actually quite average at holding an edge and it also will benefit from an initial trip to your favorite stones right out of the box I would give the out of the box sharpness about a 7 out of 10 but I gave it that bit of love and now it's a thin scalpel of a blade that just wants to slice. I specifically wanted the KS because at the time I purchased it uh, I was looking for both a shorter slicer and uh, a 240mm Guto. And this one pretty much does both for me. I was also after a knife where the whole blade would patina so not just the edge and I didn't want to have to sand down a good old chi finish. The knife has been fairly easy to care for but if you think you're going to keep it patina free think again. This beautiful blade will patina all the way around. I immediately rinse and dry this knife during and after use and it still has developed quite a patina regardless. Uh, I couldn't be happier about it though, uh, and I'm looking forward to to earn more of a patina on this blade. My overall thought is that it's just a great knife, if a tad overpriced. From what I've seen, it runs at f about $400 in the US for the 240mm. In my humble opinion, that is a little overpriced, a little over overhyped. Still a great knife, uh, I do like mine a lot and ever since I have this knife it made me really consider what knife to buy next as uh, the, this Masamoto KS is pretty great at everything. Probably for this price you can find even better performance per buck. On the other hand I believe that in this price range any advantage uh, one knife will have over another will at best be marginal. Tell me, what are other knives similar to the KS? Uh, there are far too many Gyutos out there with a similar profile as the KS, aka KS clones. There are far too many to name them all, uh, I mean, but here are just a few that I could find real quick. The Matsubara Blue number 2 KS. The Shibata Kashima R2, the Konosuke Togata GS, and the Moritaka AS. All of them have real similar profiles, uh, maybe not the exact same edge geometry, most of them are maybe a bit thinner, more like lasers, and none of them really have that continuous distal taper, which is so iconic for this Masamoto KS. Uh, the main thing that sets the Masamoto KS apart from all the other Gitos at this price range is that it's a mono steel blade. And there are not so many carbon steel mono blades out there. This is one of them. A 240 millimeter Gyuto like this uh, in a little home kitchen like mine can feel a little bit like wielding a sword. This is especially true since the heel is a good inch from the ferrule, so it's even longer than you would think. Uh, more about 250 millimeters, as I said. Uh, if you have a small kitchen like me and are using it on a portion of countertop that has a backsplash behind it and a cupboard above, depending on the task at hand, it can feel a bit like doing surgery with a katana. Preferably, you'd have a big open area like a kitchen island to use this knife. 
The other thing you want to be sure of is that you have a big enough cutting board for it. I originally started using it on a 300 millimeter by 400 millimeter board and that felt very cramped and I also found the tip was often going over the edge and sometimes stabbing things it had no business stabbing at all. Is this KS worth the hype? Is this Masamoto KS really worth the hype? To be honest, it's definitely not a miraculous wonder knife uh, that I've seen some people claim it to be, but it's still a fantastic knife. If you have a bunch of knives like me, which one do you end up grabbing? That's all that matters, right? The Masamoto KS by no means is going to make you a better cook, but if you want quality, it's right there. It's such a knife nice. Is it? $400 nice for a 240mm Guto. Let's just say I wish it wasn't 400 euros, uh, dollars. I mean, I think I bought it for 360-ish euros. So yeah, that's about $400. But it still is quite often the, the go-to Guto in my rotation. And it's just a phenomenal knife in my opinion. So, in conclusion, for me, uh, the knife so far lives up to the hype. Are there better Gutos out there for lower prices? Most likely, but once greatness is achieved, the concept of better becomes irrelevant. It's just a classic knife. Now that I own one and use it, I can see why. I can I can totally see why. The the first time I picked it up, I just could feel the value of the knife. The great fit and finish, the high quality smithing. It's it's just a really well made blade. It's it's a classic for a reason. The Masamoto by now serves a purpose as a reverence knife. The standard bearer for mid-level, mid-weight, middle of the road to great performance. Because it just works. So if you are looking for a large all-purpose Japanese knife, I highly recommend this Masamoto KS240mm Guto. I'm a big fan of this profile. 